and welcome to Town Topics. I'm your host, Amanda Thompson, and I'm here with First Selectman Jim Hayden. How are you doing, Jim? I'm doing fine. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The, uh, it's a little unusual to, uh, to see us uh, uh, this far apart. We're six, blo six blocks apart, so we're <laughs> six feet apart. And we're doing it because they, that's the uh, best practice regarding the coronavirus, of which we're going to talk about uh, uh, a lot in this, this segment of let's, uh, of let's Talk Turkey, of town topics, <laughs> rather, I should say. Uh, and um, it's... Um, so the best practice at this point is to have uh, social distancing yep. of, uh, of six feet in between people and uh, to um, put yourself in a position where you're not mixing in with a lot of crowds and a lot of people uh, that you're uh, and as a result uh, the uh, a lot of different things have been postponed or canceled or, or changed the school district um, is uh, is, is out uh, for the time being, uh, and they've closed. Uh, they've gone through and they're uh, cleaning the buildings and antiseptic, I guess, is as good a word as any. Uh, and uh, it just take, it's just uh, a, a situation where what we thought we knew eight hours ago has changed or things, more information comes out. And it's, uh, it, it's a situation where uh, the best and the brightest are working on it, whether it's from the federal level or the state level. And certainly we're taking state information and uh, doing best practices that we can uh, for the town to keep the town employees and the townspeople safe and uh, and so as a result of that effective uh, opening of business on March 19th the town offices will be open but they will not be open to the public so we were encouraging people to uh, use the uh, website or use uh, the telephone numbers that you can find on the website. Mm -hmm. Town Hall will be staffed. Town Hall will be open for business. It just we physically, uh, the doors will be locked okay. to protect folks uh, inside the building and outside the building. Uh, we, um, uh, and, and there'll be a, a lock box outside that you can put correspondence in. Uh, there will be instructions about what the, you can even stand there if the weather's good and use your cell phone and call and, and ask about what it is that brought you down uh, to the town hall. We certainly uh, want to provide the best level of service, but we're in circumstances that we haven't ever seen before. Right. And so we're making, uh, <coughs> we as in the state and the feds are making rules uh, on the fly a little bit right now yeah. based on the information that we, we have. So the uh, for the uh, safety of our, our of our workers and for our townsfolk uh, themselves, we uh, will still be open and processing things, but it's going to be different. And the different is it's going to be through, through phone calls and emails. I uh, the if uh, if you have a land record that you need to drop off, mm -hmm. you'll be able to put it into the uh, uh, into the box. Uh, that'll be as you walk in the front door of the town hall. You won't be able to walk in, but you'll see to the right, you'll see a mailbox and it'll be signed. And you can put any correspondence that you need to uh, and put things in. Uh, so uh, we will be checking it frequently. We will be answering the phone. We will be answering emails. Uh, we uh, The good old fashioned email of info at egtownhall.com is uh, we, uh, we, we answer those usually within the hour when we receive them, certainly within 24 hours, but our standard is as they come in, we usually answer them. So if you have any questions or concerns, that's one way. The other way is to use the town website and call specifically whatever department that you, you have in mind because the information is there. If you happen to be in front of town hall, there'll be a sheet there that will tell you the appropriate numbers or the emails. So we want to, uh, we, this is a difficult situation on, on uncharted uh, waters, like I mentioned, and we want to uh, provide the service that we uh, need to provide and the, and the town's folks uh, expect us to provide, mm -hmm. but um, we have to do it in such a way that is safe to all. Okay. And I noticed you're posting some stuff on um, the Facebook page as well, any information that you have 
that comes out. Can people also uh, message the town hall, like on, on Facebook, to get an answer? The, uh, that, yes, uh, you, you can do that. Uh, and uh, so we are putting the information as we get it, and we get a lot of information. I think uh, there was five or six uh, Facebook posts we made yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so as we get information, we put it on the town website. Uh, at the you know, first, when you click on the, uh, the website, you'll see over on the right-hand side, it'll say coronavirus uh, updates, and we have them by date. Uh, and, uh, and then we also posted on the town of East Granby website. So f please uh, feel free to like the town of East Granby uh, Facebook, pa page. Facebook page. And uh, then uh, we also put it on the East Granby community page. So we try to get the word out to as many people as possible. But it's really important if you haven't liked the town of East Granby Facebook page to please do so. It'll help us. We also have uh, what I call the reverse 911 system where we uh, will, we can provide information to all residents uh, in town uh, via their phones. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, uh, we haven't done that yet, but we will be doing it in the next couple of days just to let people know what we've done uh, and uh, what, what exactly is happening. Okay. The um, Every day you see, you know, more offices closed or more things. Uh, several towns in the community, uh, in the surrounding area, are uh, doing what we're doing, which are open for business. But uh, it's it's um, you know through electronic format, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we certainly appreciate. Uh, everybody's cooperation during this process. Uh, we are here for you. Uh, this does not affect emergency services, uh, but it just affects the routine business that, that happens. Yeah. Are there any other um, parts of the, the town hall or with the library or social services? Anything else, information that you want to go, go over? Yeah. So, uh, Is that for now, anyway? Well, no, no, that's, that's uh, great. Uh, let me... Uh, go over uh, as of yesterday, which will, is changing because we, we will be closing town offices effective um, March 19th to the public. So today is March 18th, 18th. when we're recording Wednesday, March 18th. And, uh, but uh, <coughs> the, uh, as always, uh, Contact the police uh, with 911 if it's an emergency. If it's not an emergency, there is a, a non-emergency number on the website. Uh, certainly, if it's anything to do with the town clerk, uh, land record search or records, you can call the town clerk. Uh, that information is available on the website. The library is closed. Uh, the, uh, the library website contains many links to databases that will help you learn something new every day. Uh, but at this point, the library is closed. Senior services, all non-essential activities are, are, are canceled. Uh, essential medical appointments and grocery store transportation continues to be available okay. uh, through the minibus, and uh, you would call senior services for that like you do now. Uh, and uh, social services, um, if you have any questions, you can contact our social service director, Elise Kosker, uh, and uh, her, her self, her um, phone number is listed, uh, but since I have it in front of me, 860-413-3328. Uh, that's for social services, 860-413-3328. For senior services, 413-334. Um, so of course there's you know the 860 in front of that, um, and uh, then park and rec, all youth related after school and weekend programs are canceled. Uh, to get information on spring and summer programs or to register for programs, you can go on our website, the town website, or you can go to and then link to their website, which is www.eastcranbyct.myrec.com. And um, that way it will fill up, uh, you'll, you'll be able to get information, but also all the spring programs are available if you want to sign up. All those sorts of things can happen 
like normal. Mm -hmm. uh, what can't happen at this point is um, any of the after school or the weekend activities. Mm -hmm. uh, and because the basketball, for example, for men's basketball league is in the schools and the schools are closed and ma men's basketball is postponed or canceled. Right. Uh, so um, last but not least, um, if you um, need to talk to the tax collector or if you need to do business with the tax collector, you can pay taxes online. Uh, there's the instructions on the website or you can just call or email the uh, tax collector and she'll provide the information. Uh, so from a town perspective, that's where we're, we're at at this point. So we've curtailed most activities and uh, we are still um, working on the logistics, uh, how to continue with boards and commission meetings. Uh, we have the ability to do conference calls, but we're looking to do see if we can do some electronic meetings also. Um, and you know, the Board of Finance and the Planning and Zoning are two boards that have some important things coming up. So we're in the process of trying to figure that out. You as public would be able to call in and be on the conference call to listen what was going on. If we're able to work out the kinks on the on the video conferencing, uh, we will provide that information too. Okay. Uh, so the the meetings, um, the, the, you know, look for agendas. Uh, as changes come up to schedules, we'll let people know. Okay. But uh, we're working on to make sure that we, in this new environment, that we're still uh, providing uh, committees, commissions, and co and and boards. Uh, the ability to do business. Some of the meetings will be postponed that can be postponed. Others will be rescheduled and uh, we'll take it from there. Some uh, Sometime next week uh, as more and more of the information becomes available from the feds and from the state, we can take a deep breath and look at it. But right now we're putting things in on the fly and that's why I don't have the video conferencing yet, but I expect that we will have it. Okay. So we've got lots and lots of well, and Technology changes. Our big thing is the referendum would normally, this is kind of the big time of year, we'd be having meetings for that. And so you'll be kind of seeing seeing what happens on a, on a federal and state level well, and we're, kind it, of rescheduling meetings as we see how things go. Yeah, we, we may end up rescheduling some of the, of the meetings. Uh, the governor has allowed us to go uh, through his uh, declaration last week. Uh, to uh, extend the budget deadline by 45 days. Okay. So some of the, we, you know, we had a meeting scheduled for March 17th with the Board of Finance that was postponed until March 24th. Um, and then we've got, you know, meetings uh, scheduled uh, for the Board of Finance and then a town hearing, I believe uh, town hearing is, scheduled for um, the hearing is scheduled for April 14th okay. um, the well it actually just uh, the so March 17th was supposed to be board of finance meeting it's been postponed until uh, March 24th so we could catch up with the technology mm -hmm. um, April 7th is the meeting at town hall for the board of finance to provide final direction to the boards uh, April 14th would be the annual uh, budget hearing to be held at the high school um, and I would think that's not going to happen at the high school. It may happen somewhere else or it might be strictly electronic. Okay, so um, maybe just the where you conference call in. Yeah, conference call in and then the town meeting is scheduled for the 21st and uh, then we anticipate that we would do a referendum after that sometime in early May. Okay. All that that timetable is what we expected uh, prior to coronavirus. Uh, with coronavirus and postpones, postponements and everything, I would anticipate that, that date, those dates will probably change. Mm -hmm. And if they do change, then we certainly will publish them on all the things we talked about before, the website, the town Facebook page, mm -hmm. the, uh, the East Grammy community page. Uh, certainly, what, uh, and something like that, we, we 
uh, would do a reverse 911 call alarm just to keep people informed, let them know uh, what's going on. There's a lot of uh, concern out there. Uh, it's something, coronavirus is something that's unknown to, uh, and uh, we're, we're facing some obstacles that we never had to face before. Mm -hmm. We will. We'll figure it out. Uh, we'll provide the services. We'll do what we always do. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned a couple minutes ago, uh, we certainly need everybody's patience as we go forward. And we understand that your patience may be a little worn too, because maybe you've had to take two weeks off from some, from work because of either the, uh, the workplace mandating it or mm -hmm. based on the best information that the schools are going to be closed that long and you've got children. Um, you know, I, I would, uh, I've got a niece who's got uh, three boys who are uh, uh, anywhere from 15 to 7, and uh, she starts her, her Facebook page with day 2 of 15, day <laughs> 1 of 15, uh, as uh, they're, uh, you know, and they live in Chicago, and, you know, as around here, our parents are going through the same thing. So part of it, and one reason, you know, people say, well, why'd you close the library? Well, the Library Association was doing best practices, and if you're, schools are closed and during its vacation time where do the kids go well the kids go to the library what kinds of kind of defeats the purpose of, of trying to slow things down and I'll talk about that in a second if you've got areas that can congregate with large numbers of people right. if you let that happen and so, so um, the library is closed for the for that reason yeah. so the um, uh, I thought it might be helpful if I just talked about what the governor's latest update was. Uh, so um, he, this was posted late uh, March 17th, so late in the evening on March 17th. Uh, it, their number of positive cases reported in the state was at 68, and like I said, we are in uncharted territory, but we've got all the best people working on it and we're going to figure this out. So there should be a measured response and the town has had a measured response so far and all of us as as residents and citizens should have measured responses to things. Uh, it's uh, easy to get uh, concerned and rightfully if you're not concerned, uh, I would question that. I think everybody needs to be concerned so that they do the right things. You know, it's what your grandmother told you when you were eight years old, you know, or your mother told you when you were eight years old. Wash your hands, you know, use soapy water, hot soapy water. Um, certainly if you're ill, stay away from people. Uh, and it doesn't have to be coronavirus, it's anything at this point because, uh, you know, there's, it's normal time of year where flu's around. Mm -hmm. It's normal time of year where there's colds that are around. So if you're sick, just stay away from people uh, and, and, and that's part of it. So the governor uh, yesterday signed uh, executive order that uh, had changed the 180 day school year uh, requirement so they need to go to school 180 80 days per year and they gave flexibility to the school districts on that. Um, police departments uh, were allowed to eliminate fingerprinting for background checks. Uh, the autonomy scramby is following that. Um, it, ex uh, the governor extended expiration dates for permits, licenses, and other credentials administered by the Department of Emergency Services and Public uh, Protection. Um, it suspends the requirement that public assistant benefit overpayments uh, be immediately recouped. Suspended in-person hearing attendance requirements for certain hearings conducted by the Department of Social Services. Um, the uh, courts pretty much have shut down, slowed down or shut down uh, at this point as they're figuring their response to things. Uh, the um, the uh, governor previously also mentioned that uh, evictions are, are, are stayed for this particular time uh, frame so far where the evictions won't go forward. Also, the um, utility companies will not shut off whatever it, with power or gas or, or whatever. Um, 
the uh, Department of Banking, all the different departments are getting involved and, and their uh, Department of Banking is working with uh, their, uh, uh, their contacts to uh, talk to the banks and make sure that everything is proceeding the way it should be. Uh, the Connecticut Hospital Association is working with the Department of Public Health uh, to ensure adequate hospital space to meet the needs of the patients. And that's what I wanted to talk to for a little bit a second. Is there some, there's three schools of thought on this. One is, well, it's pretty much like Goldilocks, you know, too, too little, too big, or just right. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody's view of that depends on where they're coming from. And uh, the, um, uh, the the goal of of the of the public safety folks is to have the social distancing, have less activities, mm -hmm. so there's there's less of an opportunity for people to intermingle, and it's very contagious. And for the coronavirus to somebody that's non-symptomatic mm -hmm. could transmit it to someone else. So the idea is if you look and you see a bell curve, so you see the old bell curve like this, and um, so you've got the beginning, mm -hmm. you've got the peak, and then you've got it winding down. Mm -hmm. What they're, they're trying to do with all these, these closings and postponements and hotels, uh, not hotels, rather restaurants and bars mm -hmm. uh, being closed to, to everything but takeout. They're trying not to have the level of, of coronavirus infections overwhelm the hospital system and the medical system. So they're trying not to get all the way up to the bell curve. They're trying to stop at a position where it's manageable right. for the medical profession to mm -hmm. handle these particular things. So that's, you know, gee, I feel fine. Everybody I talk to feel fine. Oh, what's going on? This is, you know, people are, you know, early on in, I think you'll see less of it now, but early on in, oh, people are overreacting. Well, it turns out they probably were not overreacting. Mm -hmm. And that uh, when uh, you look at the models of the countries that have already been through this, uh, how were they successful? They were successful with the social distancing and preventing some things from happening. Mm -hmm. So there's certainly going to be hiccups in the road. There's certainly going to be uncomfortable moments. There's certainly going to be a uh, learning curve uh, on a lot of different things. But uh, if we uh, are able to practice the best practices, uh, Farmington Valley Health District is a great resource. If you want to go on uh, their, uh, their webpage, which is uh, from, is uh, f8 let's see fvhd dot org. Uh, you can click on. They have updated uh, information uh, regarding the coronavirus, but they also have a link to CDC if you want to see what is happening on the federal level. Uh, there's more and more conversations happening and education and communication going. Uh, I get something from the governor twice or three times a day. Uh, as we mentioned, you know, we have stepped up our communication via the town of East Granby with the uh, Facebook page and the web and the East Granby community page. Uh, let's see, Office of Early Childhood is actively working to ensure child care remains available. Uh, and um, But some of the preschools have closed on their own. Uh, the uh, Department of Motor Vehicles is suspending in-person visits uh, at all of their branches. Uh, certain deadlines are being extended. Uh, when in doubt, go on a particular website, in this case the DMV website. Uh, Department. Of, this is Connecticut Department of Revenue Services is suspending in-person visits at all of their offices. Uh, the um, Department of Energy Environmental Protection is suspending enforcement activities at bottle collection connected facilities, giving stores discretion to shut them uh, to shut them down. There are also sp suspending in-person visits at their main office. Uh, the Attorney General is uh, investigating 71 complaints about price gouging on base supplies. Um, the uh, Department of Social Services has suspended all in-person visits at all of their facilities. So you can see there's, you know, there's less and less face-to-face uh, uh, -face contact that's happening temporarily. This is all temporarily. Mm -hmm. uh, 
depending on the information of the moment. Uh, you know, it could be, well, gee, if you look at China and South Korea, it took three months for it to go from beginning to end, so maybe that's what we're looking at. That, uh, that's not scientific, that's just you know, mm -hmm. making an observation. Uh, I know the president uh, two days ago mentioned that in one of his press conferences that he thought that by, you know, July, August, but I think probably more August, thought that things would be back to normal. Yeah. Um, so um, this isn't something that is going to be over next week mm -hmm. or the week after. Uh, there's going to be uh, more instances of coronavirus in the state of Connecticut. Uh, with the Farmington Valley Health District has told us to proceed as if it was in our community already. Okay. Uh, and that's uh, why we're taking some of the precautions that, that we are taking. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, it's certainly uh, something that we all want to be level-headed about and have measured response to, but take it seriously because we don't know what we don't know right now. And that's scary to me. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and I think it's easy for people to think like maybe it wouldn't affect them because maybe they're healthy in their middle years, but it's important to think about the other people in your community who maybe aren't healthy or, you know, are in an age range that it might affect them more significantly. And so it's really just being thoughtful to your neighbors and your family and the people around you too, not just about yourself. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, the, uh, you know, I mean, you know, people know that I've been first selectman for my, I'm working on my 13th going on 14 years next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, they understand that when they first saw me, I had brown hair. So it's no secret when I tell you that, that I am in the protected group age. Uh, <laughs> uh, if, uh, if you say the protected group age is age 60, uh, or even if you say age 65, uh, which tradition is what people say, I'm in that age group. So, you know, you don't think, it, you, 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 all of us think of ourselves as Superman and Superwoman. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you brought up a wonderful point, and the point is if we do things just not for ourselves, but for all our family members and everything, and right. we certainly have uh, in community members, and we have uh, a, you know, a sizable population, but it's not just something that is, goes to somebody that's 65 and older, mm -hmm. it's something that is all ages, um, and uh, the length of recuperation could be different uh, based on the age and the health, as you mentioned. Right. Um, there was, um, you know, someone that that mentioned to one of our offices uh, yesterday that they wanted to come in for an appointment, and uh, so the person said, "Okay." And the person said, "Well, let's see. I'm going to the doctor for this medical issue on Tuesday, and I'm going to another doctor uh, for a medical issue on Thursday, a different medical issue on Thursday." So the town employee very respectfully said. You, you know, this is something that can wait. It was something that doesn't need to be done until mid mid May, mm -hmm. so there's some time here. As yeah. I said, um, for your sake and the sake of of everyone else, you should not keep that appointment because there's plenty of time for you to make auxiliary plans and you don't want to be out and about when you've got uh, some serious medical issues. Right. So even if you don't have a serious medical issue, you want to limit your contact. And you know, what do you think, what do you, what's the even over, uh, even money on when uh, cabin fever is going to hit everybody? Uh, <laughs> well, it, I guess the upside is that it's not January, right? So at least it's not freezing out and we're lucky enough to live in a community where most people have a little bit of green space or can get some fresh air without being too close to others. And uh, I think we're all a, a little thankful for that. Absolutely, so, absolutely. A little upside. And parks are not canceled or, or closed. Uh, but again, you, you know, if there was a large congregation of people, we would move to Closer. correct that situation. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, uh, there was a 27-year-old that I know very well because he's my son, and he said, well, I can't go to the gym anymore. You know, what am I going to do? And I said, well, you can jog, you can use the greenway, you can take the trail, you can do this, you can do that. So there's a lot of... four miles of the Metacomet to walk. <laughs> there's, there's lots and lots of things that we can do. We just need to 
be open to those opportunities. Uh, and um, the uh, just to mention from a from a business perspective, we're. Um, on our website, we put information from the Small Business uh, Administration for small business owners. There's some low-cost interest, uh, low-interest uh, uh, loans available, uh, and there's information about, about that on the the Town of uh, East Granby Facebook page. And also, there's. Um, uh, if anyone in the viewing audience has been affected by the coronavirus from a layoff perspective, mm -hmm. there is also information available so that you can, uh, uh, you know, you can uh, look for unemployment insurance or, or whatever. You can go to the Connecticut Department of Labor for that. Okay. Uh, so there, uh, the governor's office is moving very, and the state government is moving very quickly to provide services and opportunity or at least information. Okay. So those are available for folks. Mm -hmm. And whether it's small business loan or whether it's a, uh, you know, it's finding out if you qualify for uh, unemployment insurance, mm -hmm. those are important things to find out and they're available at the State of Connecticut website. Okay. I, um, I know some people were asking about, uh, were worried about kids being out of school who um, may get like free and reduced lunch or they were worried about some people as far as their jobs and how, how could they help people in the community. Is it just best to contact Elise Kosker to see how they can help best or what they could? Certainly uh, Elise who is the director, Elise Kosker who is the director of social services certainly if you fall into the category of you uh, could use some assistance mm -hmm. or if you fall in the category of gee, we'd like to know what we can do and we'd like to do something, yeah. uh, at least would be the right contact for both of those situations. Okay. Uh, the food pantry uh, is uh, is still open, even though the East Grammy Congregational Church is not open, and that's where the uh, the food pantry is located. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the, the clients that are using the food pantry have been received notification from the food pantry on specific criteria. One of the criteria was you know, going uh, that you're only one person at a time, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, or one group of people at a time, and then you know with gloves and wash and that sort of stuff. I, my understanding is is that they're going to change that a little bit, where mm -hmm. they will prepackage things uh, you, you know, and they will bring them to your car. Okay. So uh, as things go forward, uh, they'll come. They'll they'll. Uh, certainly share the information with their, the different uh, clients that use that, but if anybody has any questions on the food pantry, uh, they certainly should call uh, Elise Kosker, who is the uh, who is the Director of Social Services, and I'm browsing to see if I have it, and the number for Social Services is 860-413. Three three two eight. Do you know um, off the top of your head, and maybe this is a question we'd have to ask Elise about, um, if you wanted to donate items that they're looking for, I mean, normally you drop it off either in the entryway of the library, which is closed, or the entryway of the community center, which, which is, probably will be closed. Too. That will probably be closed There's, too. Those doors are open at right now, but when okay. we talk about town hall buildings, we're also talking about any of the ancillary. Okay. Buildings. So that would be closed too. Uh, so certainly uh, you could email info at egtownhall.com okay. and we'll let you know where you can do that or you know we could make sure that some collection buckets are outside in good weather underneath the canopy so they're right. protected mm -hmm. and, uh, and then uh, you know we could you know, make sure that it gets to where it needs to go. Okay. But at this point um, we're figuring things out. Yeah, it's a lot to figure out. So what other information do do we need to know? I feel like it's a whole new set of questions than I would normally ask you on a normal month just because so many things have canceled and uh, so many things have changed. Is there anything you want to tell us in reference to the Let's Talk Turkey? Because that came out and then of course so it, much in there is Yeah, before I, before I get oh, into sure. that, I just wanted to mention that like I did earlier about the Farmington Valley Health District and they're on this. Uh, the uh, restaurants and bars are closed. Uh, the well, if uh, the uh, pickup uh, 
call in dial in service take for out. take out thank you is fine uh, I, I had this uh, I had this vision in my head of take out liquor you can't do that I don't <laughs> think that's legal uh, the uh, and and so you know so that's that's all happening. Uh, guidelines have coming down uh, if they haven't already for uh, hair salons, nail salons. Uh, my understanding is from anecdotally from someone that they were going to go to the hairdresser today because they're going to be closed tomorrow. So I don't know if that's just because that person's closed or if the stipulations come out that they need to close for the time being. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't want to start any rumors. I, I don't know, uh, other than, like I said, anecdotally. Um, the other thing that we're just going to do is we're just going to try to give out more information wherever we can and provide the information and uh, and do our best to uh, provide uh, services to the residents of East Grammy uh, while we go through that. And sometimes the service is just giving you some information. Yeah. Uh, regarding Let's Talk Turkey, uh, we did have some things that uh, that we've already talked about with the budget, where we talked about what the dates are. We anticipate that those dates will probably change, but for the time being, they're where they're at. Uh, and uh, the uh, grand list, just wanted to mention that the grand list uh, decreased $128,777. That's like a $607 million grand list. So grand list is the list of uh, uh, the accounting of all of uh, taxable property, mm -hmm. uh, personally and otherwise, and houses and real estate and cars uh, in the town. So it's it was a flat. Uh, Oh, flat increase over the previous year. Uh, like I said, it was uh, statistically flat. Uh, it was 128,607 million. Uh, so the 77% um, uh, of our, uh, actually 78% of our grand list is real estate. 11% mm -hmm. uh, is personal property, and almost 11% is motor vehicles. Uh, overall, uh, real estate values increased by 0.3%, uh, so it's 0.3%, and uh, personal property uh, decreased almost 1%, and personal and motor vehicles decreased by 1.5%, or the value of it. So the grand list uh, is something that, as we've mentioned in our previous edition, is something that we uh, you know, keep uh, looking at regarding taxes because, mm -hmm. you know, with budgeting. So how much can you know, how much uh, taxes are you going to have available, and what are the services and priorities that need to be provided by the Board of Education and, and the Board of Selectmen. Um, so uh, the Board of Finance instruction to the uh, Board of Selectmen and Board of Education was to come in with a 2% budget to see how that looks. Uh, both of us have got uh, budgets. Uh, the uh, Board of Selectmen budget is going to be slightly under 2%. Uh, we're looking at about 1.9% that we will bring eventually to the Board of Finance. Uh, and, um, you know, and I'm not sure where the schools are at at this point. So this is a, you know, there's never, Never a good time to have a pandemic, but they're never a good time to have a disruption in the normal flow of education, communication, and mm -hmm. meetings uh, when we're going through the budget season. Right. So we'll do everything in our power to make sure that those that want to understand what's going on with the budget will have the opportunity to do so. Okay, and that'll be coming out shortly, since it will be next next week that we would normally have the the Board of Finance meeting. Correct. So you'll be hearing news very shortly. Yes. The um, uh, other couple things just to talk about is uh, our DPW crew is uh, working and they're out and about uh, preparing some roads for paving uh, in the Metacomet area uh, first and then we'll be doing uh, uh, off of Holcomb, uh, we'll be doing, uh, I call it the President's, uh, uh, you know, Washington and Jefferson, you know, those streets and those areas right there, Mount Vernon. Uh, so we'll be, uh, we'll be doing paving, uh, so we're doing preparation work for that. But also the DPW is doing winter cleanup, uh, and they're working their way through the neighborhoods. So they'll pick up broken yeah. curbing, raking out lawn areas damaged uh, in the, on the town.
down right away. One of the things that we're uh, we're going to do is the uh, is is actually uh, the recycling center, the RCC, mm -hmm. is actually a uh, is a, you want to consider that as an emergency service because you don't want garbage to pile up in yeah. houses and everything. So uh, we are looking to uh, probably temporarily expand to three days a week okay. for the RCC. And the reason for doing that is twofold. Is one is to, uh, is to make sure that garbage doesn't back up anybody's house mm -hmm. uh, uh, or residence. And the, but the other is if we're open more days, uh, then we can stretch out the amount of people that are going any particular day. So we're looking uh, at uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Okay. For the very near future, it's not anything that we anticipate or have budgeted mm -hmm. for going forward. But during mm -hmm. the the uh, uh, coronavirus uh, situation, we certainly uh, recognize that if we can have spread out when people go, right. it's better. If we can do that by adding a day, then that's better. And we're, so we're doing will that. you post that if that's official? That will be uh, that will be uh, official tomorrow, and it will be uh, posted uh, on the website and on Facebook. Okay. And uh, speaking of recycling, just wanted to remind folks that uh, we recycle recycle all sorts of things: uh, electronics, cardboard, plastic, the you know glass, the usual uh, glass bottles, the usual. But we, uh, for several years, uh, have. But it seems like a best kept secret. For about several years, we have recycled textiles. So, clothing. Uh, there's a container at the RCC before you get to the area where you need a permit, so it's free. And also in the senior community center parking lot, there's mm -hmm. there's a container, so you can put. Well, okay, so what's textiles? Well, it's clothing. It's um, comforters, curtains. I mean, mm -hmm. anything like that that you want to recycle. Uh, it can uh, be put into the container mm -hmm. at that point after the container uh, is, uh, is is empty they go through and the, the it's a company called base base state recycling and they go through and they recycle it and recycle it either if it's something that can't be recycled it becomes fodder or material for something else okay. or if it, uh, there uh, a lot of these things get recycled uh, and sent to uh, uh, you know third world countries uh, at this point. So there's uh, it's really important that we're all good stewards of the environment, uh, even in these difficult times. And that we, if we can recycle, you know, cleaning. Hey, I got a lot of time on my hands right now. I'm going to do spring house cleaning a mm -hmm. couple months early. Well, you, you reminder that you can get rid of your textiles at the two containers, one at the RCC or one at this parking lot at the Senior Community Center. So we um, we we certainly have. Uh, Plenty of opportunities for recycling. Uh, we're working on, uh, as a state, we're working on other options to take things out of the waste stream, mm -hmm. including uh, uh, right now there's some experiments on taking garbage, you know, f of food waste out okay. of the out of the uh, municipal solid waste stream through anaerobic uh, digestion and and other forms of recycling. Mm -hmm. there we're, we're not there yet, but I, I there's a person in the community uh, that made me aware of the fact, I think that was off of our last our last telecast, mm -hmm. that uh, there, uh, there is uh, a company that's out of Harford that has a facility in Bloomfield that does pick up garbage uh, you know, for uh, food waste. Uh, so uh, as I find out more about that, I'll I'll pass that on. So that's basically a lot of what's happening. Uh, we're focused on the coronavirus uh, and some keeping people safe. We're focused on providing services in the meantime while all that goes on. And life does go on. Uh, mm -hmm. But some of the things that you're used to seeing uh, aren't going to be there. Uh, you know, we, we're past, well, we're, we're past St. Patrick's Day, but there's a lot of 
communities that have St. Patrick's Day parades, the, mm -hmm. always the Saturday after yeah. uh, St. Patrick's Day. Well, that's not going to happen this year. Uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, we do have um, a Women's Club 5K race uh, uh, scheduled for late April, uh, along with other activities. I've just mm -hmm. used that as, a, as an example, depending on how where we are as a community, as a state, as a nation, um, things like that may or may not go on. So some of the fun stuff that you look forward to may not be available yeah. temporarily for this time. Mm -hmm. So the when in doubt, um, call, uh, either call the town hall, uh, the selectman's office at 860-413-3301 or info at egtownhall.com. We want to do everything we can to provide information, answer questions, and help allay any concerns if possible. Okay. Sounds good. Is there anything else we need to go over, or do you feel like you? I think we probably, yeah. yeah I, I, the uh, coronavirus is important to talk about, which is why we're doing the social distancing instead of of, uh, of canceling the town topics. I thought mm -hmm. it was important that we still continue to disseminate information, even if the information is go to the website. Uh, it's, it's important uh, for mm -hmm. us to be there. Uh, we, uh, we will figure this out mm -hmm. as we have figured things out uh, collectively over the years, uh, and uh, I am confident in that. I also would want to reassure folks, I mean, we've had several meetings already of our uh, emergency operations center. Mm -hmm. We've come up with contingency plans. We've uh, looked at uh, different things and try to see, you know, how we should handle particular situations. So, um, you know, even though you may not see some Something happening, rest assured that you know, fire department, police, emergency operations, mm -hmm. town staff were all dedicated and committed to making sure that we provide everything that we can for public safety. Good. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, then this will conclude our March episode of Town Topics, and we'll see everyone in April, hopefully with more news and more settled dates on, on things as we move more forward. More settled dates and less, uh, less uncertainty. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good rest of your March.